Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. In this section, we'll begin our dabbling into linear programming uh, model. So what is linear programming model? What is LP problem? Think of LP as a tool, much like a hammer screwdriver, uh, to solve a, a category of problems where you have constraints, you have limitations, you have restrictions, right? You have demands. And also, at the same time, you have an objective function, a way to measure what's good, what's bad. And you want to optimize this. All right. So in such category of questions, LP is the best tool. Uh, what should I do so that I can get the highest amount of profits within this, cons this set of constraints? What should I do so that I can minimize my total cost? So within this set of constraints, you know, and yet producing uh, enough quantities to meet daily demands and so on. Right? So all these problem descriptions, they are very readily translatable into LP uh, problem formulation. So I've, I've just given a brief mention of examples about uh, maximization and minimization, right? So in LP, we always have to talk about maximization or minimization, or in short, it is optimization. So we are we are optimizing certain quantity. This quantity uh, is usually a, a sort of a business variable, business number that is desirable to be increased or decreased, but not directly. So for example, suppose this business variable is profits. We like our profits to be as high as we can uh, get within this environment, within our factory, for example, or selling within Singapore, for example, right? So how can I maximize my profit? So that's the desired goal, all right? And uh, well, you just manufacture a lot, right? But do we have enough working hours? Do we have enough workers? Do we have enough working capitals to buy the inventory? So we have a lot of constraints, and that is the whole uh, kind of setup. Right? So that, that, this kind of description uh, will be best described by linear programming tool. So when do we maximize, when do we minimize? I hope it's utterly clear to you that any business variable that is good for the business, that is desirable to have higher, the better, you want to maximize and otherwise minimize. So anything that's positive, right? Like uh, revenue, we, the more the merrier, we want to maximize. Profits, um, productivity, for example, uh, happiness, company happiness, company health index, right? Um, customer satisfaction index. So all kinds of indices can translate uh, very nebulous, measurements like are you happy are you not are you satisfied with our product are you not right in some kind of a zero to ten scale and get into a quantitative measurements so we already know that but once we have that quantity we want to maximize that of course we can't say that hey customer can you fill in 10 you know uh, i give you money so that you will we will have a very high value for our customer satisfaction. That, that's not the way we do it. The question is, for example, uh, if we can tune right, the, the fragrance, uh, does, it, does it smell uh, citrus or less citrus? So, so we, what, what should I do so that I can get the most customers to like uh, my fra fragrance product? Uh, and so, so by tuning the citrus level, uh, I can get the customer satisfaction level to increase you know to to some extent then that would be how we do it right so through something that we can control uh to maximize or minimize the business variable that we cannot control okay so now anything that's negative uh that is doing damage to the business that is no good for the business you want it minimized so for example total cost right so can we minimize the total cost or can we minimize the fixed cost which is going to yield a different solution, likely to yield a, yield a different solution than if our aim is to minimize the total cost. How about to uh, minimize the total waste? That, now, that does it sound, doesn't waste sound like cost? It's true, but sometimes the conversion from waste to cost is not linear, right? So if we want to go from 
that uh, if you want to deal with minimizing waste, then specify directly. So minimize waste by doing some other things, right? Uh, what else do we want to minimize? We want to minimize um, uh, idle time. Okay, uh, you want to minimize workers' idle hours. Okay, you want to minimize um, uh, damage done to products during shipment. Okay, so all these negative variables, uh, the lower the better variables, are something that we will just stick on with minimization. So it's quite clear. All LP problems have constraints and. Uh, uh, constraints are basically uh, going to be inequalities. So so let's write that down. So constraints, we say constraints because we are talking about business problems. They are going to be translated into inequalities. Okay. Some sort of inequalities. So in inequalities, we only have three types. Okay, so we have uh, less than equal to, we have equal to, or uh, we have greater equal to, and we have equal to, and we do not deal with just, uh, just this, just less than. We just simply write less than equal to, right? Because the boundary case is really not something that we dabble in. We just write it as less than equal to, uh, and uh, for less than equal to, I will just give a broad statement first that it is. Usually, do it, it give it is it arises usually because of resource limitations in real life. Okay, for example, uh, we only have ten thousand dollars of working capital. So, do whatever you want to maximize the profit, but no way am I going to ask headquarters for more working capital. So that's resource limitation. So money is always resource limitation. Uh, workers, number of workers that we have, resource limitation. You know, ask them to do whatever you want. Uh, but you cannot hire more workers, so that's it, right? Then there's another category of inequality, certainly the greater equal to, and you will translate real life uh, uh, limitations or constraints into greater equal to when you have performance requirements. All right, what do you mean by performance requirements? Performance requirements will be some sort of a parameter that must be at least certain stated quantities. Example, I want to minimize carbon emission footprint for our factory. Fine. Well, if that's the case, uh, stop production. Right? Then you will stop emitting smokes and your carbon footprint will be zero. That's the best. No, 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 no. Add in the constraint that we are going to still uh, send some smoke into thin air, enough for us to produce a profit of $5,000 per month then we'll be happy, the management will be happy. But if we uh, already have $5,000 profits per month, then don't have to produce more because we don't want to damage the environment. Example, right? So you have to have performance. What's the performance here? Profit. So example, um, we want to reduce the carbon footprint, so don't produce anything, zero. No, 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 we need to keep the workers busy. You know, we have uh, 20 workers, if we uh, sort of don't make them work for at least a certain number of hours in a day, uh, it's not going to look good and that will affect our other planning. So make them work at least uh, three hours a day and the rest of the hours we can send them to other you know, uh, productive areas, but not in the factory. And thereby, in doing so, we can reduce the carbon emissions. Something like that, right? So uh, have certain performance requirements. Now, for students, uh, you, you're, you, you are supposed to do well, right? But uh, uh, sometimes you have other commitments and you kind of slacken off a little bit, so your GPA will drop. Uh, but, uh, well, the university says, yeah, you, you can drop as much as you like. But, hey, you know, to stay in our university, you better have at least 3.0 out of 5.0. Uh, so make sure you're, you're, you can do whatever you want. You can... Uh, uh, ignore your homeworks and all that, but if your GPA drops below 3.0, out you go, isn't it? Yeah, so that's another performance requirements on your GPA before, uh, um, calculate, uh, results. Then finally, we have the equality constraint, which is 
to be thought of as um, sort of uh, exactness, right? So exact, exact uh, requirement. And you can also, uh, equal sign is, is uh, it's not an equation here, but used as an inequality. Think of it as uh, representing two constraints. Uh, greater, uh, less than equal to and greater equal to. All right, so I want you to steer away from thinking equal sign as equation because we're talking about constraints here. All right, and uh, thinking about equal sign as equation will confuse us, especially when you're learning this the first time. So I keep myself uh, aware of the fact that equal is not equation and don't try to solve it by cancelling and all that stuff by thinking of equal sign as a pair of constraints, less than equal to and greater equal to at the same time. We'll see some examples of that. Okay, so some uh, for, uh, further terms in LP solutioning, a uh, feasible solution, a feasible solution satisfies all the constraints. So we'll have a bunch of less than equal to, greater equal to, uh, like five inequalities, a feasible solution will meet, will satisfy, will, will agree with all the problems constraints, all the inequalities. Example, two constraints. Don't spend more than $20,000 working capital. Don't use more than 10 workers. If a particular solution says produce uh, 10 glass doors and five glass windows, right? So you will have to use some money to buy material. You have to use some workers to produce them. You will end up using say $10,000 of working capital and uh, three workers. Okay, So that's okay. It's feasible because we can do it. Feasible in real life means can be implemented. All right, so feasible is a word in mathematics satisfies all constraints. But you must always think of the parallel. And it is thinking along this parallel that is where your expertise comes in. That is why companies favor your, your know-how. That is why company hire you, right? So um, a feasible solution is a point here that satisfies all the problems constraints. In real life, a feasible solution tells us that it can be done in real life. No problem. We have the money. We have the number of workers. Example, what is an infeasible solution? We only have 20,000 working capital. We only have 10 workers. How about producing 500 glass doors and 2,000 glass windows? Well, then you will need $5 million of working capital and uh, 600 workers. Clearly, we don't even think about it. Right, that's not possible. So, so it will break the inequalities on the mathematical side, and it will basically get us a scolding in real life. It's not doable in real life. So it's nice to have this one-to-one -one parallel. If it is feasible mathematically, it can be done in real life. If it is not, then no. Nice, because now we are seeing real life happening in mathematics. There's a basically one-to-one -one correspondence, which is 